Hey, how's it going, guys? So, uh, in case you guys are wondering, I'm back to my old spot because we cleared out everything in that uh, room. So now all I have right now is a table and my stuff uh, until I leave for the East Coast. But anyways, welcome back, guys, to another Star Wars reaction video. If you're new channel, welcome. So we're gonna be checking out another video from Red Five. So shout out and credit goes to Red Five for this video as always. And also make sure to go check out his channel and leave a like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, and also check out his other videos because there are some I did not cover yet. Now this one is called Every Single Jedi Council Member Explained. Now I do know um, some of the Jedi Council members but there are some that I don't know. Uh, for instance, I'm looking at the thumbnail right now, Kip Fisto, hey, Kip Fisto and uh, Mace Windu, Samuel L. Jackson, and Shakti, the one Jedi Master who got killed five different ways. Because I remember she got killed in like two deleted scenes in uh, Revenge of the Sith. She got killed in Force Unleashed. Dude, she she just keeps on getting killed. <laughs> I guess um, I guess George Lucas or maybe the production crew had like different uh, had had the reasons. And I don't uh, I do know that the Grand Master of the Jedi Council is Master Yoda. And also more members of the Jedi Council that I know are um, Kiari Mundi, uh, Plo Koon, and um, Eat Koth. And um, this is from Tales of the Jedi. Uh, Yaddle. I, I know more. Uh, I know more, but for some reason their names don't come to mind. But I also uh, want to include him since he did start sitting on the council since uh, Episode Three, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Now, oh, and Ayla Sakura. Man, I can't believe I forgot her. But uh, now we're gonna see uh, which council members that I missed, or maybe there were some that I never knew. So without anything else, let's jump into the video. The Jedi High Council, an exclusive club of the 12 Jedi Masters tasked with governing the entire Jedi Order, the most powerful and knowledgeable of them all. The Jedi High Council made important decisions regarding the training of Padawans, as well as deciding when an apprentice would undergo the Jedi Trials in order to advance to knighthood and later the rank of Master. The High Council also enforced the Jedi Code and typically selected their own 12 members. They would also later take a leadership role as the Clone Wars raged across the galaxy. So just mm -hmm. which Jedi of the tens of thousands in the galaxy were selected to sit in those pristine 12 chairs? Let's talk about it. This is every single Jedi High Council member explained. Oh, and I just forgot, um, Barriss Offie's master, I forgot her name, oh my yes, god. Yes, we did make a video on this topic back in 2022, but it's a rough watch and we felt it was worthy of an update. Let's just say our editing and my voiceover skills have come a long way. In this video, we'll <laughs> just be touching on the hey, council same. members my from recording around my, the prequel uh, trilogy, voice, uh, as uh, the voice capturing too. era isn't one I've explored much, aside from watching the Acolyte. Without further delay, let's begin. Sifo Dyas. Sitting on the council shortly before the Phantom Menace, How did I forget DS about was him? a human Jedi master from Minishi who was gifted with the power of foresight. When he foresaw a coming war that would ravage the galaxy, he believed that the Galactic Republic would require an army if it were to prevail. Yet, his peers on the Jedi Council rejected his notions, leading to his removal from the Council. Nevertheless, he pursued his ideas in secret and contacted the Kaminoan cloners, but in doing so, he unknowingly entered the crosshairs of the Sith, who set out to assume control of and hijack his cloning project. Jedi Master Count Dooku betrayed him by hiring the Pike Syndicate to target sifo T6 Jedi Shuttle, shooting it down with the Jedi perishing in the crash. Ironic that the first Jedi we're talking about began the chain of events that would result in many of the others dying. Tara Sinube, How poetic. another Jedi that we don't oh, yeah, him. see on the council, but did sit there before episode one, is Tara Sinube. The his lightsabers was inside the cane. elder by the time of the Clone Wars and likely stepped down due to his age. Still, he was able to help Ahsoka Tano recover her stolen lightsabers using a rare light blue lightsaber cane to do so. At some point during or shortly after white. the initial events of Order 66, Sinube had been killed and was entombed at Fortress Inquisitorius on the moon Nur. Oh, that was him? 
the chief librarian of the Jedi Temple's archives on Coruscant, Jocasta knew once sat on the Jedi Council. Oh, she Jocasta knew. Coruscant when Order 66 came down and attempted to set up a new Jedi school. Jocasta returned to the temple to recover a Jedi holocron, which listed every Force-sensitive child in the galaxy prior to. I Order watched the 66. audio comic, guys. But knew was tracked down by Darth Vader and the Inquisitors and was slain by the Sith Lord, Katri, a female Marilyn that served on the council prior to the Phantom Menace. I don't Jedi know her. Master Katri was killed on Raxus Secundus by a group of security droids. This prompted Count Dooku and Mace Windu's investigation oh. in Tales of the Jedi. Taivaka, a rare Wookiee Jedi Master, Taivaka was another to serve on the council shortly before the prequel trilogy. A revered and respected Jedi Master, Taivaka trained several Padawans, including Plo Koon, who we'll get to shortly. The Wookiee was renowned for his ability to sense the future and assess the best possible course of action in any given situation. So, he was chosen to help Senator Valorum broker peace between the Stark Commerce Combine and the Trade Federation during a Bacta shortage. At the Peace Summit, where Several other notable Jedi were present, they rendezvoused with the Federation's representative, Nuke Gunray, and were in turn met by the head of the Stark Commerce Combine, Ieko Stark. However, upon arrival, Stark and his men drew their weapons on Taivaka and the others, demanding their immediate surrender. Taivaka turned the tables on Stark and his men, but in the ensuing skirmish, was accidentally gunned down by Gunray's droid escort. Yoda one Jedi who needs no introduction is none other than Yoda, a member of a still-to-be-unnamed species. Not only did he sit on the Jedi High Council, but he also held the rank of Grand Master as the oldest and wisest member of the Order. Prior to the Clone Wars, was Count Yoda, Dooku's master along too. with the next entry on our list, Mace Windu, each at one point also held the title of Master of the Order, as the elected leader of the Jedi High Council. Eventually, both titles would become one in the same, and remained with Yoda. We won't spend too much time with Yoda since he is one of the more well-known Jedi, but he of course served on the Council for hundreds of years prior to the Phantom Menace, even during the High Republic era. He was known across the galaxy that I did know. for his wisdom and power, Having trained several generations of Jedi, he would survive the events of Order 66, going into exile on Dagobah, learning how to become one with the Force from Qui-Gon Jinn, and passing his knowledge on to Luke Skywalker, dying of old age at 900 years old. Mace Windu Seen by many as Yoda's second-in-command, Mace Windu took the seat of Master Katri following her death and remained on the Council until he met his own demise. Windu was the user of a very rare purple lightsaber and mastered powerful abilities like Shatterpoint while creating his own version of the seventh form of lightsaber combat, the Pod. One of the most powerful Jedi of his time, Windu's biggest weakness may have been just how strictly he followed the Jedi Code as one of the more rigid members of the Council. Mace was killed by Palpatine after Anakin cut off his hand, becoming one of the first victims of the Great Jedi Purge. Plo Koon As mentioned earlier, Plo Koon he may still was be alive. trained by the Wookiee Jedi Master Taivaka, taking his seat on the Council oh, after his death. I didn't know Plo that. Plo Koon belonged to the Keldor species, and was required to wear a mask and goggles to filter the air around him, so it matched his home world of Doran, a planet with a helium-rich environment. Otherwise, he would suffocate and his eye fluids would evaporate. He was the Jedi who discovered a young Ahsoka Tano, bringing her in to be trained. Plo Koon led the 104th Battalion, or Wolf Pack, alongside Clone Commander Wolf during the Clone Wars. The Keldor served on the High Council up until his death during Order 66, when his Jedi Starfighter was shot down by Captain Jag's Arc-170 in the skies of Kato Nemodia, the home planet of the Trade Federation. Plo Koon was also known to be the favorite Jedi of Clone Wars creator Dave Filoni, who wished to portray the Jedi as a Gandalf-like character. Depa Balaba, that I did not know. native of the planet Chalakta and former Padawan of Mace Windu, Depa Balaba fought in the Clone Wars and became the oh. master of Caleb Doom, or Mace was Jarrett. this Padawan? She I didn't know that. She served on the Council during the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, but was not seen in the Genosian arena. At some point during the early days of the war, Balaba got into a skirmish with General Grievous, with her clone battalion suffering a 90% casualty rate. 
Balaba was Damn. badly injured and placed in a coma for six months, forcing her to step down from the council. Though she would return to her seat eventually, she stepped down for unknown reasons prior to Revenge of the Sith. During the final days of the war, Master Balaba and her Padawan led the Battle of Kaller, their forces pinned down prior to the arrival of their reinforcements in the form of Clone Force 99. Just as the Bad Batch and the Jedi prepared to launch another counteroffensive, Order 66 was issued, with Clone Captain Grey and his men turning on the Jedi. Balaba would sacrifice herself in order to save Doom, allowing him to survive and one day join the Rebellion with the new name of Kanan Jarrus, Eth Koth. An Iridonian Zabrak, the same species as Maul, but from the planet of Iridonia instead of Dathomir, Ethkoth served on the council prior to the Phantom Menace and participated in the Battle of Geonosis. Later in the war, Koth was captured by General Grievous in a battle over the planet Seleucami before that being was a rescued good episode by Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, and Adi Gallia. Sometime following his rescue, Koth relinquished his seat on the High Council, leaving the Jedi Order entirely. He would go on to have a wife and daughter, becoming a priest on a desert planet. Following Wait, Order so 66, is that canon? Darth Vader would track the former Jedi down, killing him and abducting his child for the Empire's Project Harvester, an inquisitorious operation to capture young Force sensitives and turn them into Imperial agents skilled in the ways of the dark side of the Force. Yarrow Poof a Quirmian Jedi Master, Yarrow Poof, like Yoda, served on the Council for hundreds of years, dating back to the High Republic era. Poof died on an unknown mission prior to Attack of the Clones, oh, I didn't know that. though it was depicted in a Legends comic, where he sacrificed himself to destroy a planet-killing artifact on Coruscant. Behind the scenes, he was replaced as to avoid confusion with the similar in appearance Kaminoan cloners. He's probably best known for his run in the Star Wars Robot Chicken parody episodes when he's tasked with bringing up pizza for the Jedi Council. He returns to the aftermath of Order 66 and goes on to become a chef in the Empire, serving bisque to Darth Vader and the Emperor. Adi Gallia, <laughs> a Falothian female born on Coruscant, Adi Gallia, as oh, mentioned, man aided in the rescue of Eve Koth from General Grievous. Balaba was said to be highly regarded for her skills as a diplomat and political consultant, but still led the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps into battle. Later in the war, she would accompany Obi-Wan Kenobi to Florum, the pair facing off with Darth Maul and Savage Opress, the latter that was a really good her episode. life by impaling her with his horns. Oppo Rancisis, like Yoda and Poof, the Thespesian Jedi Master Oppo Rancisis served on the Council dating back to the High Republic era. He was known to Him, be one of the know. wisest Jedi Masters of his time, present for several key Council meetings, and, alongside Quinlan Voss, led the Siege of Seleucami during the later days of the Clone Wars. Rancisis actually survived the initial Jedi Purge, appearing on a list of survivors that the Grand Inquisitor presented to Darth Vader. Evan Peel a member of the Lannic species, oh, yeah. Evan Peel at some point the lost Citadel his left episode. eye. During the Clone Wars, Peel was assigned a dangerous mission in the Outer Rim, where he and his captain, Tarkin, would discover information about the Nexus Route, a key hyperspace route which extended between the hearts of Separatist and Republic territory. Desperate for the information, Peel was captured and imprisoned at the Maximum Security Citadel Complex on Lola Sayu by the Separatists. A task force led by Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker came to the rescue, but unfortunately Peel would be killed during the escape, attacked by a pack of Anubas. He passed along his information on the Nexus route to Ahsoka Tano with his last words, before succumbing to his injuries. Yaddle the female of the same unknown species as Yoda, Yaddle. Yaddle also sat on the council for a long time prior to the Phantom Menace and apparently trained Oppo Rancisis. Yaddle stepped down from the Jedi Council off-screen before the end of the Phantom Menace, deciding to take a less active role oh, in she Jedi stepped down? affairs. She would notice the turmoil within Count Dooku following his apprentice Qui-Gon Jinn's death at the hands of Maul. Following Dooku to the works and watching him meet with Darth Sidious, Yaddle would confront Dooku and offer him compassion, but it was too late. Dooku would cement his fall to the dark side, besting Yaddle in a lightsaber duel, cementing her as his first known Jedi kill. Kiadi Mundi, a member of the Surian species, Kiadi Mundi had two brains. 
Other than Yoda and Windu, he is the only other Jedi mentioned so far to have a speaking role in the prequel films. Mundi often stuck to both logic and the Jedi Code, having a hard time believing that the Sith returned or that Count Dooku had fallen to the dark side. Not only did Mundi participate in the Geonosian arena, he also helped lead the second battle of Geonosis, even authorizing the use of yep. flamethrowers. Mundi was the one who originally expelled Ahsoka Tano from the Jedi Order when she was suspected of bombing the Jedi Temple hangar. In Revenge of the Sith, he raised his concern about the Separatist attack on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. The final days of the war saw Mundi lead the 21st Nova Corps, or Galactic Marines, during the Battle of Megiddo. When Order 66 came down, he was leading a charge across a bridge before Commander Bakara and several other Marines stopped following and opened Dude, look fire. at the look of confusion. Mundi was able to deflect a few shots before ultimately going down. Sacy Tin. Rounding out the Jedi Council at the time of the Phantom Menace is Sacy Tin a Niktachi from the moon Iktach. Tin participated in the Battle of Geonosis and was known to be a skilled lightsaber combatant and starfighter pilot, perhaps second only in the cockpit to I vaguely know Skywalker. Him. He was also known to have natural telepathic abilities superior to most other Jedi. Tin accompanied oh, Mace wow. Windu and two other Jedi who we'll get to, becoming one of the first victims of the Great Jedi Purge at the hands of Darth Sidious himself. Coleman Trevor. We now enter Attack of the Clones uh, territory with Coleman Trevor. The male got killed by that resembled Django. the dinosaur took the council seat of Yerl Poof after his passing. Trevor participated in the Battle of Geonosis, making the unwise decision to jump up to Count Dooku's platform in an attempt to end the war before it even began. Trevor was quickly gunned down and killed by the bounty hunter and clone template Django Fett. Shock T. A female Togruta, the same species as Ahsoka Tano, Shock T took the council seat once held by Yaddle. She participated in the Battle of Geonosis in Attack She was killed clones. like four times After though. The onset of like the I war, said, Shock T was tasked with overseeing the training of clone troopers on Kamino. Her compassionate views often clashed with the more ruthless outlook of the Kaminoan cloners. Shock T may have been the closest Jedi to uncovering the secret of Order 66 when Clone Trooper Tup's inhibitor chip malfunctioned and he was brought to Kamino along with Arc Trooper 5s. The biggest mystery surrounding T, however, has to do with her death. During the Great Jedi Purge, it seems the canon answer is that Anakin Skywalker killed her during his raid on the Jedi Temple. The scene was cut from Revenge of the Sith, but is referenced in a vision in The Clone Wars. Another Episode 3 deleted scene had her killed by General Grievous during the Same first way. act of the movie, which is also referenced by Anakin and Obi-Wan in Clone Wars. We also have to mention her legend's death at the hands of Starkiller, which is my personal favorite, but definitely isn't canon. Stas Ali. That's what I'm saying. She got killed multiple times. Editions. Stas Ali was the cousin of Adi Galia and took her seat on the council following her death. She too participated oh, I didn't know in that. the Battle of Geonosis. Ali was known to be more skilled with force healing, becoming a member of the Jedi Medical Corps. In the final days of the Clone Wars, Ali and Clone Commander Neo led the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps on Seleucami. When Order 66 came down, Neo and another clone fell behind Ali on their bark speeders, opening fire on the Jedi Master, sending her to a fiery grave. Kit Fisto a Nautilin Jedi Master known for his dashing smile, Kit Fisto. Kit Fisto likely took the seat of Coleman Trebor after his death. Unlike Trebor, Fisto did survive the Genosian Arena and went on to fight in the war. At one point, he and his former Padawan, a Mon Calamari named Nadar Veb, were tracking Viceroy Newt Gunray, but ended up at General Grievous's lair. Veb was killed, but Fisto was able to hold his own against Grievous thanks to his mastery of lightsaber combat form 1. Given Fisto's species were able to breathe underwater, he was one of the generals who led the Republic's campaign to liberate the underwater world of Mon Cala. Fisto, like Ceci Tin, that was a great, accompanied Mace Windu uh, to arrest episode. Chancellor Palpatine. He was able to last a few seconds longer than Tin, becoming the third victim of the Purge after Darth Sidious sliced him across the abdomen. Coleman Kodge, an angry Jedi Master, very little is known about Coleman Kodge other than the fact that he is often confused for another Jedi named Pablo Jill, who appeared in Episode 2. Kaj did actually survive the initial events of Order 66, 
Seen on that list of survivors, the Grand Inquisitor shows Darth Vader. However, he would eventually be found and killed by the Inquisitors. His body is seen by Obi-Wan Kenobi 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, left in a oh. petrified state in the Fortress Inquisitorious. Agent Kolar. Often I didn't know confused that. for Eeth Koth, Agent Kolar took his seat on the council. Kolar fought on Geonosis with a green lightsaber, but when his Padawan, Tan Yuster, died in the battle, Kolar took so his was cyber him, crystal not and used it moving forward, paying homage to his fallen apprentice. Kolar was known to be an exceptional duelist, but he was the very first victim of the Purge, caught off guard and stabbed by a force-screaming Darth Sidious. Obi-Wan Kenobi. What's there to say about our last two entries that hasn't already been said? We all know Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin yeah, Skywalker, Yeah, he even got his own so TV show. We'll keep it brief. Obi-Wan Kenobi was trained by Qui-Gon Jinn and took the council seat of the deceased Evan Peel. Kenobi was a legendary Jedi and the true master of the defensive lightsaber combat form 3, Sarisu. He, of course, trained the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, oh. before his turn to the dark side. After just killing General Grievous, Kenobi was targeted by Commander Cody and the 212th Attack Battalion as Order 66 was enacted. He survived and chopped up Anakin Skywalker, forcing him to wear the iconic Darth Vader suit. Going into exile, Kenobi watched over Luke Skywalker before the events of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and A New Hope. Anakin Skywalker. Finally, to say? we land on the last person appointed to the Jedi Council. But he was Anakin a representative, Skywalker. not a master. Anakin was not chosen by the Jedi to sit on the Council, but by Chancellor Palpatine, which the Jedi did not like. This is why they refused him the rank of master, but what more can we say about Anakin? We all know where his fate lies. But who is your favorite Jedi Council member? Let us know in the comments. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red5, standing by. Okay guys, so when it came to um, the Jedi Council members, um, choosing a favor is really difficult because every single one of them are amazing in their like unique ways. You know, Yoda, he's the Grand Master, and he lasts in so many movies mace windu he's a little bit more aggressive and as I said rigid but however he's very powerful and um you know and so i mean like every single one of them is unique in their own way so choosing one is really difficult but i can't believe i didn't notice this um so that jedi master who is very similar to um eat cough <sighs> all these years guys this is my mistake I always thought that when um, Darth Sidious cut, uh, cut down that Jedi Master, it was Eeth Koth himself. So when I saw the audio comic where Eeth Koth survived, I thought that was like um, Legends or something like that. But no, it's canon. So Eeth Koth did not die at the hands of Darth Sidious. He died um, at the hands of Darth Vader when he became a priest. So it was another Jedi Master. Oh my god, how did I not piece this together? But anyways, um, every single Jedi ma uh, Master on the council was amazing, but some of them really did step down um, for their own personal reasons. And looks like uh, most of them only filled up the seats because many others were unfortunately killed. But this was a, re a really great video and it's a bit longer compared to some of the other videos that usually Red5 does. Because the videos that I always see from him is usually like 10 to 12 minutes long, but this one was almost 20 minutes long. But hey, he did an amazing job. So again, Red5, if you're watching this, uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing amazing work. So that's all I got for today. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. And also, if you can answer his question, which Jedi Master is your favorite? Like, which council member, I mean, is your favorite? Put down in the comments below. But you know what? If I really had to choose one, I would actually go with Yoda. I really like Yoda. But anyways, hit that notification bell so you don't want to drop another video. And thank you so much for your support, guys. I really do appreciate it. So until then, I'll see you guys next time.